Today, we show you how to go from this to this. Nope. Nope. Yep. Dibs. Let's not waste any time today. We'll begin our transformation by prepping the walls for paint. To start, let's rip out all this cheap trim that adorned the top and seams. We have plans to replace this with something a little better at a later stage. Catch anyone up who hasn't watched the first few videos in this series, this is our 2022 Covered Wagon 6x10 cargo trailer. We plan on using this for a variety of hauling and utility purposes, but it will also double as our weekend adventure trailer. Let's also remove these metal trim pieces on the ramp since we'll be attacking our floor in just a little bit. Next, we'll sand this down, first with some 80 grit, and then we'll make a second pass with the 120 grit. You can see the screws aren't flush with the walls, nor are the walls flush with the walls. But that's okay, we're not looking for perfection here. We'll let it look sort of industrial. In preparation for the primer, we'll need to remove as much dust as possible. We'll use a vacuum that really sucks and methodically go over every inch. Before we put down the primer, let's run a bead of caulking along the baseboard just to keep things sealed up and looking nice. I did put some caulking on some of these low spots. I probably should have used wood filler, but in the spirit of dibs, so why not? Just to ensure we've sucked up all the dust, we're going to use a lightly damp sponge uh, mop thing. Really wring this out so we don't saturate the walls. We're doing this just to pick up the fine dust and loose debris. As you can see from the water, we did pick up quite a bit of loose material and fine dust. We went down to our local paint shop and picked up this water-based primer. We'll start with a nice thick coat and see how this fills in the gaps of the stable deck material. I'm not looking to completely smooth out the wall, as we mentioned earlier. I do want to retain some of that texture and industrial feel. Look how much brighter it is in here. It's looking pretty good, but I want to put down another coat just because this material soaked it right up. Let's build up one more layer and see how it looks. There, this is looking mighty fine. Just to ensure we get a good bite with the paint, I'm going to go over this again lightly with 120 grit. This is just to help promote adhesion, so careful not to sand through your primer. And then, of course, we'll succulate and clean everything real good. We'll once again bring in Mr. Mop to do the fine dust removal. We've let the walls dry overnight, so we're ready for the next step. I grabbed some of this thicker commercial-based paint. It's light, it matches the theme, and it should contrast real well against the colors we'll eventually be using for the cabinets and floor. Let's get to work and get this paint up on the walls. Ah, 
Father's Day. It's nice to have a little help around here every once in a while. Hey, you missed a spot. Wow, this looks absolutely awesome. I'm really liking the way this turned out. Time to unmask. I have an idea for the floor, but for this, we really need to ensure the screws are not extruding above the surface. We'll go ahead and sink these screws in further as needed. And of course, I've lost my countersink bit, so this is one way of improvising, I guess. Some of these floor seams are too uneven as well, so we'll use some floor leveler. Let's clean up, then get to applying this stuff on. It's important to get this stuff on as smooth as possible. It's rock solid when it dries and difficult to sand. Wow, remember what I said about it being tough? I won't be able to resand this very easily, but it's level enough for our next step. So here's what we'll be applying today. A bunch of vinyl planks that were on sale. And to put this stuff down, here's a bucket of glue I got from the same store. So prep, let's mark the center line of the floor. We want to work from this reference line and move our flooring outwards. I'm going to use this old chalk line we bought for a roofing project 15 years ago. Now let's ensure we have the right spreader as indicated on this label. For this part, slather on the glue and then spread it out as evenly as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just try to minimize the ridges. This tool I bought seems to work better on the shorter end because the ridges are more evenly distributed, so that's why I'm spreading it this way. We just need a nice even coat. We'll wait for this to set for a while, just enough to get tacky, and we're going to want to work as quickly as possible to get these planks secured. In order to have a nice tight surface to lay the plank ends to work from, I wedged in this long piece of scrap wood. This will help keep everything from sliding as we work our way inwards. Meanwhile, let's start prepping our planks. Obviously, we're going to want to stagger and randomize our starting points at the base of the floor. We'll do this by cutting different lengths for the planks. Just score this thing, snap it, then make the final cut and slice it off. The glue is about tacky enough to start laying the planks. You can see that it actually dries clear and our center line will be easily exposed. We're using the center line as a reference for the pieces in the middle. Now let's start laying these down as tightly to the edges as possible. Work your way outwards and upwards as needed to ensure each piece that goes down has a full flat edge to line up with. It's important to put all the cut edges towards the walls because this part won't be visible. We want to have only the factory cut edges to line up with each other so we don't get any unsightly gaps. that we're up with the nose of the trailer, we're gonna have to cut these at an angle. I'll use this little angle finder as a straight edge because that's all I have on hand right now. Not perfect, but close enough. Yes, I do have a considerable gap here, but that's okay, the cabinets will be covering this whole area up anyways. Some of these notches can be tricky to cut out, not to mention the planks that have to be cut in half the long direction. I'm kinda wishing I explored other ways to cut these as there are alternatives. But, in the spirit of dibs, let's just do this the hard way. Ah, the very last piece. Like a glove. We're gonna take a slightly different approach on the ramp. Because I'm concerned that these planks might fall off, we're gonna use both a lighter plank as well as a wet set method. Supposedly, this should allow the planks to be more permanently attached to the ramp, which will be serving most of its life in a vertical position anyways. I noticed that if we start in the exact center, it's gonna be a giant pain to cut the plank on the left side because it'll be so small. We'll just shift the center line over a couple inches, which will make the last piece much easier to cut and fit. And we'll get most of these prepped beforehand since we want to lay them down as quickly as possible while the glue is still wet. There, all of this is cut and mocked into place. Let's remove them and get the glue down.
It's finally finished, and just in time, too, because I think there's a storm of ruin. Ah, oh, crap, I can't put the tailgate up yet. <sighs> well, that was a pain, but we had to save the whale... I mean, our project. Let's relax for a bit, and so can some of the nature sounds. It's a couple hours later, and I think that we'll let this sit overnight. I have a fan blowing from the inside to help ventilate this out. Well, this has been drying all night, and it's a beautiful day today. Let's remove these tarps and see what we have. Alright, this is looking pretty good so far. Let's give this a test and close the ramp to see if the planks fall off. Any bets? I don't hear anything falling off yet. Well, it's fine so far. Crossing your fingers, it stays this way for a long time to come. To finish off the ramp, let's look into replacing these original cheap channel rails with ones that are a bit thicker and better quality. Using a center punch, we'll mark out our holes and then install some of these new stainless steel hardware and washers. There we have it, our first transformation for our adventure trailer. I'm really happy with the way this turned out so far. We have a lot more to do in this project, so be sure to stay tuned. Also, if you have any suggestions on how we could create these cabinets up in the nose of the trailer, please comment below. It needs to be simple enough and within good reasonable time constraints that we can come up with a solution. Meanwhile, thank you for watching, my fellow Squatchologists, and we'll see you next time.